Thank you. Hi, I'm Tony. I came from Finland. It's seven degrees there, so it's a little bit of positive shock to be here. <laughs> uh, I come from Reactor, which is a digital con consultancy. We do work for like HBO, Netflix, Adidas, FC Liverpool, Heineken, so beer and football. That's all you need. Uh, we are originally from Finland, now global about 600 people and just opened an office in Lisbon. We host the chill out corner there by the restaurant. So come chat with us and ask questions there as well after my presentation. So uh, kind of was hoping to give 45 minutes of AI. So now it's going to be maybe 35 <laughs> because the technical issues, but we can manage. Um, well, first of all, I would like to ask if uh, you are familiar with kind of functional programming, meaning things like immutable data, map and filter operations, and let's say higher order functions. Raise your hand if this sounds familiar. Okay, half and half maybe. So that's also something you will see now in practice. And after this, you can then Google up the theory and everything fancy about that. But I won't explain in detail all of the things about that. And I lied a little bit. I said 45 minutes to craft an AI. Actually, I will spend first 15 minutes to teach you closure programming language. It's like I have this two, uh, two full day session training, which I give uh, to our people and to our clients. And now I have condensed that to 15 minutes. So it's like drink from the fire hose of closure. And then we will spend the last rest of the session to actually make the AI. Why do we use closure? There are like two things why that is. And the first one is that closure quite nicely works with data and the data and the logic of the program are separated. And that's something that's really, ha really handy when you work with AI. And the second one is that I will also provide you with kind of a learning path that you can follow if you become as excited as I am about AI after this. So let's get started. So most of the session I will be programming live. And the idea is that you can follow along. In the website of the conference, you can see the, a link to this GitHub repo. It's a reactor slash future AI works. And if you clone that, you can work now or after this session uh, on your own. I will then, once we have coded it here, post a solution as well. But now it's just uh, what we are going to do. But there's instructions to how to install closure. And then the command that we will be running now to start a closure editor. So this is a kind of a special kind of editor running this nightlight. It gives me a browser interface to Clojure. So I can just navigate to localhost port 4000. And here we have a nice editor that is kind of embedded in the browser. Right, but let's start with Clojure first, then move on to AI. I'm creating a new file. And I put the whole path here, let's say source. Uh, what we are going to do is a general problem solver. Let's not do that yet. Let's say this is a scratch file for just learning. Learning closure. So let's create that file. I, I'll zoom a little bit in. That was actually there already. Oh no. Forget that one. But let's start with the basics. So closure is a Lisp. And the word Lisp comes from list processing. And all the closure programs are data. And a lot of it is lists. Now if you have your editor ready, you can actually in this nightlight click on this to instantly evaluate everything that you type. So I can create a list which is this regular round brackets. And on the left, 
it shows like the first line, the line number, and on the left you can see the result of the evaluation. So let's do some basic math. Let's, one plus two is three. That's what it's saying. Okay, but we can have as many elements here as we like, like this. So the basics of closure is like this. You have a list and then the closure parser, which we call a reader, uh, looks at the first element of the list. That's called the function position. And it tries to figure out what to do with that. If it's a name of a function, it's going to call it with the rest of the list as an argument. So in this case, plus is a function. So closure calls that with these, right? And by the way, uh, I think since we lost a few minutes, I will take most of the questions afterwards. We have a little bit things to go through. So here's another operation. I can check whether, oh, okay, I didn't do that. Is there a way to fix this? <laughs> By the way, getting presentations on the screen is also a problem. We have not been able to solve with AI. <laughs> cool. Okay. I'll try to be more careful, I guess. <laughs> no. <laughs> see again. So yeah, another operation is to check whether these elements are in order, in this case accent, ascending order, or the other way around. No, it's not, because it's the other way around. So these evaluate the true or false. Um, then if I want to create a list of data that I don't want closure to evaluate, I can actually quote that with single quote. So this is now just a list that the closure will ignore or not evaluate. Then we have vectors, which is another type of sequence, um, which is used in some of the places in programs, so that's why I'm showing you it. And another basic type of data is a set. So this has four elements. And actually now we are going to use one of those closure functions from the closure core, which is conjoin. Let's put this sets and add an element of five. And you can see on the left side that, yeah, now we have a set with five. But if I had put a duplicate there, it's not added, of course, because set only contains unique elements. All right, then we have also maps. So they are key value pairs. And in closure, it's kind of conventional to put uh, what we call a keyword type to name for the names of these. So that's a colon and text. And you can actually use hyphen like a minus sign also in these names. Foo bar has the value of 42. Foo bass is like 313, like that. And let's now use this also. Let's put a list around that map and let's take out. We can use the keyword as a function. 
because closure supports that. So we can take the f value of full bar with this index. So closure is now, since it's the first element in the list, this keyword full bar, it calls that with the map as an argument, and the keyword is able to extract that from the map. So that's how you can get values out of a map. That's one way. Uh, but this is now not that convenient because we are just creating data and throwing it away. So let's come up with a way to reference something. So we can say def for define and then x contains the result of this addition. And if we evaluate x, we can see that it contains the result. Yeah. Um, what else? Well, then there's a way to define a function, fn for function. And now we are going to use the vector. So this will, this vector contains the arguments. And then the body will be, let's say, uh, I want to square the x like this. Okay, and this again, fn, now it creates a function, but again, throws it away. So we have to store that reference to the function like there's a word defn for that. Define a function and it's going to be squared. And now I can call that squared, like square five and it's 25. Okay. So closure is very similar to the C, C family in the sense that you would in Python or Java or whatever, write it like this. But now you just take that parenthesis and move it here and then you have closure. That's the basics. Um, and something else. Well, let's say there's also a type called record. And let's say we have a company. And this is just a map with uh, defined fields let, like uh, name and offices and let's say employees. So company has a name, offices and employees. And def record actually creates a function for us that we can say that turn the map. Okay, this editor actually has ligatures. So I have a hyphen and then the angle bracket, but it shows you like an arrow. That's like fancy, but it's not very cool when you're actually demonstrating something. But yeah, that's how it does it. So map to company. And let's put our company, of course, reactor, and name some of the offices. Let's put here. I actually think I will a little bit reformat that. So actually, all of the closure editors have nice auto format, but the placement of those lines may be a little bit tricky when you start out because it has its own rules for. Uh, how to actually indent the code and so on. So yeah, that creates our reactor and let's put some offices here like Amsterdam, Helsinki. Okay. Right, so we get a company, but that's even if I store a reference, it's immutable. So it won't change ever. So let's do some update to the data. And we have an if. Let's put a condition here. Let's say that if the number of employees, okay, pay attention, this is now the most complicated thing that you will see. Let's store actually the reactor somewhere. So let's put here define reactor. So let's take from reactor the number of employees out. So that's that's the um, that's the first part there. There's a if and the condition and then there's what if this is true. So what we are going to do is update reactor and namely the value of offices and then we can put here define a function like we did before and this function first takes the current value of offices that is in the map of reactor at the moment and conjoins, let's say, Lisbon to that. 
and if that condition is not true, so the else branch is now in the other form here, we are just going to return the original one. So yeah, now we get the original one since we don't have yet more than 599 employees, but since we get 600, yay, we opened the Lisbon office. <laughs> That's how it works. Um, yes. Then one more thing that I would like to show before we go into the AI is uh, Clojure has a nice way to define kind of pipelines of data, how you transform in different steps the same data. So what you do is an arrow operation, again, hyphen, angle bracket, and let's say we start with, again, some, let's say, world, and then this pipe feeds this to the next step. Let's say it, uh, str is a function that kind of concatenates strings, creates a new string. So this thread first operation that we have, hyphen, angle bracket, takes this here and puts it as the first element here. So the first argument that string will be called with. So let's put hello there. Now we get world hello, okay? That's not cool. But we also have thread last that takes the same data and puts it as the last argument. Hello world, yeah. I have to put the space there as well, yeah. All right, so that is the closure that I wanted to show before moving on to the more interesting topic of AI. Are you still following along? Oh, I see a lot of nodding. Nice. Um, well, actually, if you are streaming, if you can pause the stream, that's also a good idea if you want to try out. Pause it a little and then try it by yourself. That's, that's a good way to learn. Uh, yeah. In, in the repo, we actually have a link to the book that I'm using as a reference which contains the implementation that we are going to do in Lisp, and I'm translating that to Clojure. And here we can find, it's an open source book online. Um, chapter 4 contains a general problem solver from 1950s, so this is bleeding edge. Uh, actually, what, we are, what the AI that we are now building is kind of a rule-based AI, the kind of where you can take the uh, knowledge of an expert and transform that into rules that people can actually understand. And of course, you know now there are like deep learning networks and different kinds of st statistical models, huge models that are trained with lots of data. And that creates another type of an AI. It can do amazing things, but usually it might be difficult to explain why. What is actually the rules there? There are lots of variables, lots of interactions, and so on. So this is kind of the other way of doing an AI, something that can lead to creating like an expert system that helps, can explain why this is like it is. So that's the track we are taking here. What we are now using 2008 technology instead of 1957. And what we will be doing is now mm, let's see actually let me just restart this after doing resetting back to the main branch uh, yeah I tried some things last night at hotel so uh, it's better to start from nothing and let's open again the browser all right and create a new file to actually implement our fancy AI source GPS for not for ge geographic coordinates but this problem solving and let's say solver Oh no, why is it here already? I don't know. 
there is some reason why it's but yeah one thing when we start from scratch now is to actually give a namespace to this thing so it should be matching the um, file that or the structure of the file system that we have so in in the folder gps we have file solver so this is the way to do this in in um, closure and we actually in the repo we have two example scenarios that we are going to work with so if we can go and look to the scenarios folder we are now going to try the monkey problem which we have encoded in closure but I will shortly describe what we are trying to do so we have a monkey in a room it's standing by the door and it's holding a ball and then in the middle of the room from the ceiling there are suspended some a bunch of bananas that it wants but it can't get there so we have to find a way how how that can be solved so the starting state is that the monkey is at the door it's on the floor it has a ball it's hungry and there's a chair that's also by the door and the goal of the monkey is not to be hungry and we have some operations that we can apply so we know that the monkey can climb on a chair it can push the chair to the middle of the room it can itself walk from the door to the middle of the room it can grasp the bananas it can drop the ball and it can eat bananas but there are some preconditions here like if it wants to grasp the bananas it has to be at the bananas and it has to be empty-handed so it can't be holding the ball and after it grasps them then it will have the bananas and it's no longer empty-handed so that's what we have we have an action preconditions for taking the action we have a list of things that are added as, as facts to the state of the world and we have a list of things that are deleted from the state of the world. Wow. So now that we have defined a namespace, we can do a keyword that says require. So this is a way to import stuff that we already have here. So GPS and, sorry, no, scenarios. And there's an ontocomplete that you can click here as well. So scenarios monkey. And if we take refer, that can take out stuff like uh, what we have defined. There is a monkey goal, goal for the monkey, monkey, oh, sorry, monkey ops for the operations, and monkey state for the starting state of this problem. So let's just the line break there so that we can see something all right so let's see where we are at um, yeah let's start with just applying one operation to the world we take the world this is a function that takes the world as the first argument and then takes the operation as up all right and how do we actually apply something see well one thing that I didn't actually show you before is a let op let construct so this is again a special type of a thing for closure and it just lets us define some local variables kind of so it's a closure with a s instead of a j in functional speak so what we can do is just for convenience take out from the operation uh, the list of added things things that it adds to the state of the world and things that it deletes from the world and how do we actually apply well we update the world and especially the state of the world so that keyword and update the last thing that it, this update function takes is a function that we define with fn if it takes now the current state and I think I will put a line break again and now we are going to use the threading just for convenience so take the state 
And actually, in the scenarios that I showed you, I have defined all, all the things as sets. So the state of the world is a set of facts because they cannot be twice the same, like the monkey is twice at the door, it doesn't really make sense. So what we actually would like to have from the closure core or closure set namespace are set operations for working with, for adding with union and taking something out with a difference. So this is only like this, what we do is we do an union with the add list to add those facts. We do difference with the del list to delete those facts. And now we can try out whether we can actually, oh, that's not nice. Can we actually apply something? So apply to an empty world and let's take like the first operation that's in these operations that we have defined. Uh, let's insta REPL and see what happens. Oh, I didn't do a typo, this is nice. So if you apply the first, let's go and look. First operation is to climb on the chair and after that the monkey is at the bananas and on the chair. And yeah, it says that the state is now at the bananas and on the chair. But of course we are now not considering any like preconditions or anything, so we are not done yet. Uh, what we will try to do is actually achieve our goals. Let's create a function called achieve. Takes again the state of the world and then it takes a goal that it tries to achieve. And, and yeah, for convenience let's again take the state out of the world and bound that to the, let's bind that to the local variable called state and then the um, operations that are valid in this world. So we are going to build a world that contains all of the facts about well, the problem that we have. And well, how, how does this work? First of all, if, well, if the state already contains the goal, we are kind of done. So the world is finished. Everything is cool. If not, then we'd have to look at all the potential operations that we could take. Uh, and how do we find those? Well, let's say one operation that we can do is to filter out all the operations that we have in this world and find those that are kind of applicable at this state. So let's take an operation with filter we can filter out that operation list one at a time and what we can do is to see is this operation applicable in this world. Let's put the world there. And we have not yet written the function applicable to define what we can, with which operations can we take. So let's do that now. There's a syntax error because the, uh, this form is not finished yet, but we will ignore that. And as you can see in closure, we can use all these funny symbols in these names of functions. Question mark is valid. It's for something that returns false or true. So we call that a predicate. But you can also put like these hyphens and exclamation and you always have to do that because it shows how superior you are to other languages. Like, yeah, just whatever, it works all, all the time. Um, <coughs> yeah, actually what we will do is not take the world because well, let's see. We spent quite a lot of effort to get the state out of this world here. So let's use that directly. So in this state, is this operation applicable? Uh, it is if in the add list, the facts that this operation adds to the world 
if there is a, a goal. Uh, sorry, that has been goal, I guess. Um, yeah, that has to be the goal. So for this goal, if I want to reach it, the operation has to be applicable. And it is if this operation adds the goal that I'm trying to reach. All right. This is kind of the most complex part of this. So you might want to review the thing that we create after this session some thought. And you can have the book as your reference as well. Um, yeah, so what we are going to do, we take those potential operations and now we are using a new function that's sum. And sum just uh, goes through or a list or sequence. It goes through a sequence and finds one where this function actually returns true or true th. So we take all the potential operations, we go through all of them with this sum and we try to apply the operation like this. We are applying it right. Okay, so I guess that's the way that we can achieve our goals. And let's try that. So now we are going to create a little bit of world for us. So let's start with the actual state of the monkey at the beginning of this example. That's our part of our world. And then we have the actual operations or let's say take out that first, we take the operations that it, the monkey can take and then let's again try to achieve one of the goals. So the first goal of the monkey. And it says nil, which is null, empty. We are not able to do that yet. And the reason is that we are, we are not trying to solve the first steps towards the goal. We are just looking at one goal and seeing, can we reach that now? No, we are not trying to solve any of the preconditions. We just try to jump directly to solving what is the overall goal. So we are still missing something and which is then solving the problem. Let's create a function solve. And here we put world and then the goals of the monkey and now we are doing reduce over um, well over those goals yeah so reduce is something that builds a or accumulates a result from a sequence so it applies the same function to the current result that has been accumulated. So that's, uh, it, we are creating a new world. So I named that with world and single quote. So we will be changing the world in our code. And how that works? Well, we try to achieve every goal that we have. Achieve world and the current goal that we are looking at. <coughs> and we do that then in the reduce for every of the goals. Okay. Um, but yeah, we are still not done because actually, we'll in the when we apply the operation, we are there are two things that are missing basically. We are not trying to actually see whether we can take the operation because of the preconditions and we are not building now the solution anywhere so we are, won't be seeing it anywhere. We have to somehow track what steps we are taking, what are the actions, what is the path to the solution. So what we can do here is 
let's use threading again to make this a little bit nicer. So take the world as it is. And I think Sorry, actually we, what we should be doing here is use sum. This means, this is very convenient for this case since now we are trying to first, as a first step when we take the world, we are looking at the preconditions, I think, yeah. So let's take also the preconditions for the operation out. And we are trying to solve every one of those. So Let's fulfill the preconditions and the sum threading works like normal but if this does not work we cannot find a way to solve then it terminates and doesn't try to apply the ne next step so it won't be changing anything and that's cool. Um, well now since we are insta repling so this evaluates all the time we have already defined the solve in this file but if this was the first time that closure sees this, it wouldn't work. So we actually have to put declare solve to tell that there is this kind of a function that I'm going to later define what it's going to be about. All right. And then what was missing still was the update for the plan to solve the problem. Update the plan and what we do actually is um, Conjoin or add to the current plan. Um, sorry, this bit has to be a function. So take out the current plan and conjoin or add to this plan the action. Let's actually define that in the let as well. The action of this operation is added here. So that's like the name of the action that we can do. Right, and now I think we should be able to start solving the problem, but let's see what happens. So take all the monkey goals, the goals of the monkey, take the starting state and solve the problem. Not hungry. I guess it worked, but... <laughs> See? Oh yeah, there's a little bit of mis happening here. Of course, this should be part of the part of the threading as well. So yeah, now now the apply works so that we take the world, solve all of the preconditions for this operation. Then we update that, hey, this is part of the plan because it works. And then we update the state so that, yeah, we could, we could apply this so the world now has new facts and some of the facts were deleted. All right. State and operations. For some reason, why are I not seeing anything more? State and operations. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Where am I? It seems that I may have made a mistake, which is not, not that common when I'm coding live. <laughs> uh, let's see. Where was my reduce? I'm forgetting where it is. There? There it is. And here is a problem that, or a mistake that I make at least twice a day. <laughs> so, since we are reducing over the goals, which is fine, 
we are actually not taking the starting state of the world to anywhere. So we actually want to start with the current state of the world here. And how we do that? We give reduce as the second parameter, the current state of the world, which is here. That doesn't seem to cut it. Why is this nil? <laughs> All right. So with the page turn, what we will do is reset my thing to the solution. And I'm hoping that while watching this later, you are able to solve it <laughs> correctly. But basically, as you can see, this is the same solution, but there was uh, some slight mistake in what I did. So yeah. Let's just take the first part as the example. So say, let's say solve state was the starting state in this problem. Uh, oh, sorry, my mistake. Goal was those goals that we were trying to achieve. And it was the, uh, sorry, this must be operations. Uh, operations are part of the state of the world. And then we are trying to reach the goal, overall goal. Syntax error. No. Oh, this actually. Yes, so I actually in this have referenced the by name space. So I'm bringing those things from namespace that I have given an alias of monkey to separate because this actually works with two, two solutions, those are two different problems. There's a lot of data that comes out. So let's use again the threading part here like this solve the problem then after we have solved it let's take out the plan the steps and it's not correctly formatted oh no yeah so now all the parentheses are in correct places so you can see it's actually from bottom up so the monkey will first first push the chair from the door to the middle of the room, climb on the chair, drop the ball, grab bananas and eat them. Nice. Then we also have another problem that we can look at as to test our little solver. And that's a school problem directly adapted from that book. So this talks about sun being at home and your car has a dead battery. Uh, you have some money, you have a phone book and you would like to get your son to the school, but basically you have to call someone to come and fix your car. And I actually have a four daughters, but I didn't adapt this problem to myself, but it's directly from that book. So let's start with the school state to see that this actually works. Still, let's not mix monkeys and schools. All right, and again, we have a solution. We look at a number from the phone book, telephone the shop, tell about our problem, give them money. They come and install a battery and then they, I can drive my son to the school. So it works. Nice. And I don't know about you, but I'm kind of excited that less than 40 lines of closure code. I'm able to generate this fancy AI thing. <laughs> yeah. One question. Uh, does it actually uh, post the first search you find or post the most, uh, the, the most fast search? 
yeah, that's a good question. So the question was, does this actually find uh, the first solution or does it find the fastest or shortest path to a solution? Okay, that's exactly where we are going next. So looking at the book, this is like the first step. There are description of this thing, which is actually what they call a means end solver. So it knows about means, which are the operations that it can take and it knows about a end or the goal that it's trying to reach. And well, if we go a little bit further in the book, we reach a chapter called, okay, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. We lied about the G. <laughs> well, so the general part is not that accurate. What this actually does is kind of a death first search to the problem space. And it, the first solution that it finds, that's the one that it returns. It's not optimal in any way. And also, let's, there's one kind of concrete example here. Leaping before you look problem. So this always applies the operations in kind of the order that we gave them, trying to find a path. But what if you have a problem where you have two operations like jump off the cliff and land safely? This actually will first jump and then look at all the operations and see that there is no way to land safely. So <laughs> it will not reach the goal in this case at all. But then you can actually, following this book, start to build a more fancier AI. So this is the part where you can start to learn on your own as well. So you have to actually consider the paths and compare them. So this is the kind of the simplest e example. All right, but that's, that's where I have now kind of taken you. And thanks for your attention. And I think we do have some time for questions as well, if there are any other ones. Sorry? Why did you call me? Why did you call me? Yeah, uh, why I, I actually use, and as also in our company we do closure projects and I have used uh, closure in customer projects as well, Go quite big ones actually as well. So um, I, I do like closure myself, I'm very productive with it. And but one part of that, uh, what fancies me about it is this, this rebel experience that's in, you could see like a peek into it looking at the browser rebel, but when you're actually doing with proper tooling with your IDE, your editor, uh, you can actually do this uh, kind of online evaluation while you develop. You can try out different solutions all the time easily. And in some cases, we have even patched like customer systems <laughs> that are running production systems. There's a famous anecdote about a, I think it's NASA rover, or was it satellite? Anyway, they, they had uh, applied LISP, so they could actually take a remote REPL connection to that thing in space and patch it <laughs> online. So that's, that's something that's very nice about this. But the reason why I use it here is, first of all, the book can work as a reference and then kind of uh, having the data separated from the logic that you are doing. The methods that this AI applies are kind of separate from the data that we have. So we can describe easily the solution, uh, the, the problem, these two different problems just as data. That's, that's how I see it. But we do use a lot of other languages as well. <laughs> Closure is like a, still a little bit. It's a actually surprisingly somehow very popular in Finland. I don't know why. Maybe because it's harder, so Finnish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, the comment about it being harder like Finnish is just that you might not be so familiar with it yet. It's kind of, I think it's, it might be even be simpler at least if you count how many different structures there is this 
basically just lists. So kind of basic syntax is very simple. Yeah. All right. How is closure different from Just in Lisp? From Lisp, um, well, I think main selling point of closure is that it's closely tied to the ecosystems. Like, it interrupts with Java quite nicely, and you can do full stack because you have basically also JavaScript at your disposal. So you can do a full stack app and use all the like React is very very well on the front end side supported. So that's one part of it. And you can use the Java libraries. They're like, I, I didn't show it to you now, but it's, it's actually easier than in Java to use Java. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. Is there, is there another functional language that can interact with this? Uh, is there another functional language which can interact with closure? Um, I know there are some projects that are a little bit smaller that uh, Clojure also runs on like Erlang virtual machine and so on. But um, Clojure, I think, mostly interacts with like these Java and so on. But you can, uh, yeah, there is a way, since if you run on the same platform like Java virtual machine, you could use Scala as well. Oh, if, okay. Yeah, or anything else that runs on JVM. Yeah. Okay, cool. I think I have spent my time, so, yeah. And please come and chat with us. We are hanging by the chill out area if you have any other questions. Or if you like to pair code <laughs> this solution. <laughs> Help me fix the one that I was struggling with.